Greetings friends around the world. This is Bible News Prophecy Program. My name is Alexander Sasha Velic. The recent decision by the United States Supreme Court to ban abortion has caused many debates around the world and especially in the United States of America. In one instance, there is an article published on Salon site. It is salon.com site. And the title of that article is Christian Fascism is right here, right now. And then the subtitle says, After row, can we finally see it? You see, and this, part, this article was published on June 28th. And in the article we read that the Supreme Court is relentlessly funding and empowering Christian fascism, says the author of this article. It not only overturned Roe v. Wade, ending a constitutional right to an abortion, but ruled on June 21st that Maine, that the state of Maine, may not exclude religious schools from a state tuition program. It has ruled that a Montana state program to support private schools must include religious schools, it ruled, and so on and so forth and so forth. So in this article, it says these Christian fascists are clear about the society they intend to create. In their ideal America, the author says, our secular humanist society, based on science and reason, will be destroyed. The Ten Commandments will form the basis of the legal system. Creationism or intelligent design will be taught in public schools many of which will be overtly, under quotation mark, Christian. Those branded as, and now he just uh, gives a list of those who are branding, uh, supposedly that they will be supposedly dismissed by nominal Christians, and uh, it says that meaning Christians who do not embrace this peculiar interpretation of the Bible will be silenced, imprisoned, or killed. Of course, this is, as you can see, dear friends, false accusations. So, the nominal Christianity in America, in this article, has been branded as fascism, as modern fascism. Now, of course, that's far from the truth. Christians are certainly not violent. They, the real Christians, do not use any violence. They do not use any weapons. And they do not kill anyone or imprison anyone or silence anyone for his belief or for his not believing in God. Now, this article also reminds us of a historical fact, and it says, I'm quoting now, The Nazis never polled above 37% in free elections in Germany. Christian fascists constitute less than a third of the U.S. electorate, about the same percentage of those who consider abortion to be murder. Now, certainly there are proofs that abortion is a classical murder, and uh, you can see just by the way how abortion proceeds, and you have got documentaries online that you can possibly take a look and see uh, the clear proof that abortion is actually killing unborn babies. So, what can we say from a Christian perspective to an article of this content? Well, you see, Many think that if you have religious views against abortion and the certain other agendas, that you are modern fascist Nazis. But sadly, that author who wrote this article for Salon.com site, that author and many others do not understand what the founding documents of the United States of America actually stood for. As far as the 37% goes, the author should consider that for most of the first 200 years since the United States of America was declared, perhaps closer to 90% held views that are now being labeled as fascists. It is only recently that the percentage of people who believed they should obey certain biblical standards on sexual morality has dropped so low. As it turns out, that author's views are shared by more and more in the United States of America, and most likely by many others around the world. Just a day prior to this article being published, WorldNet Daily 
uh, World Net Daily, so that's one of those media outlets, posted the following on June 27, 2022. Posted the, they posted an article entitled, Elites Finally Reveal Their Enemy Number One. The enemy number one is Christians. And I'm quoting now from what World Net Daily had written on June 27th. Two shocking and unprecedented megatrends are unfolding simultaneously in the United States of America right now. The first is the explosion of what can be only described as openly predatory targeting of America's children by legions of gender activists obsessed with seducing, grooming, and recruiting kids into the phantasmagoric transgender world of puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, surgical amputation of healthy body parts, and astronomical suicide rates. Today, while almost all of America's big institutions, big media, big technology, big government, big education, big business, big sports, gush uncontrollably over Pride Month, glorifying everything that is not heterosexual, glorifying anything that is transgender and not non-binary, the push to groom America's children into the lifestyle that is contrary to the Bible has gone into overdrive. Disney staffers explicitly brag on camera about inserting as much queerness as possible into their entertainment products. After school, gay straight alliance, clubs, which purport to be support groups but in reality are all about recruitment, are rapidly proliferating throughout America's public schools. Teachers with bizarre hair hair those and multiple facial piercings openly proselytize America's children, some evangelizing the new transgender salvation aggressively on social media platforms like TikTok. Now, this was like an introduction, and then the article proceeds to basically attack Christians. Here is what it says, quote, Consider now the second megatrend. While this sexual gender anarchy is exploding nationwide, and alongside it, of course, the rest of the deranged Biden agenda, from engineering an ever-expanding foreign invasion of America across its southern border to destroying the nation's fossil fuel industry, to bringing the U.S. to the brink of nuclear war with Russia, the very same political, financial, cultural and sexual revolutionaries responsible for all of this chaos have finally dared to come out and publicly identify who exactly they consider to be their biggest enemy. Christians. That is right. Bible-believing, Judeo-Christian, moral-affirming, Ten Commandments and Sermon on the Mount, loving Christians, loving Christian believers are the real enemy, says this article. Of course, throughout this era of this current presidential mandate, many tricky substitute names for Christians have been stealthily deployed by those in power who daily blame white supremacists, under quotation mark, conservative fascists, under quotation mark, violent extremists, under quotation mark, domestic terrorists, under quotation mark, and other never-defined groups for everything they claim to find intolerable about America. Some of their attacks have been staggeringly idiotic, like officially branding parents as domestic terrorists for complaining at school board meetings about teachers indoctrinating their young children with Marxist critical race theory, etc., and then they list several events that happened for which they blame Christians, various uh, various attacks and various terrorist attacks that happened on the American soil. So we see how illogical their attacks have been. And yet, you see, after the U.S. Supreme Court has overturned abortion as a legal action, these extremists have actually blamed Christians for having done that. While Christians do think that abortion is indeed a murder, and while the Bible teaches us that life begins at conception, 
Obviously, Christians were never violent in their belief. They basically resisted it in their own personal lives, and they never attacked the others. However, you see, uh, a good portion of the current American society has found Christians as scapegoats to blame for the recent decision by the United States Supreme Court. Now, considering Americans as potential terrorists for not agreeing with changing governmental views is clearly in conflict with several amendments of the United States Constitution. Anyway, it is not that the agnostic elites are opposed to all Protestants and Greco-Roman Catholics, though they do oppose all true Church of God Christians. They are actually opposed to those Protestants and Greco-Roman Catholics, as well as to Church of God members, who take biblically supported views on aspects of life and sexual immorality, it is them that they want to silence. Well, we have seen on YouTube on Vimeo, there were several continuing Church of God videos that have been removed, and we have been also seen, we have seen that in big tech shadow banning, uh, there is these platforms are involved, they're doing shadow banning against the continuing Church of God and many others for taking biblically backed positions. Now, we all wonder, will all these actions of the elite perhaps lead to the uh, banning the Bible? The Bible the source of all good knowledge. The Bible the source of all true revelation from God. So the question is, could we see a ban of the Holy Bible in North America? Had there been partial bans proposed and enforced by government officials in Canada? Do any United States politicians consider any biblical teachings as fraudulent and hence banning them is not a violation of the first commandment, first amendment that is to the Constitution of the United States? Are there risks associated with any of the regulations have politicians like Hillary Clinton and California Assemblyman Al Muratucci called for long-held religious beliefs to change and evolve over times? Well, you can read and you can know from what we have been teaching that there are certain Bible prophecies related to banning or basically persecuting Bible-believing Christians as well as the Bible as the book from the United States. Namely, in Psalms, Psalm 64, verse 1, we read, Psalm 64, verse 1, Hear my voice, O God, in my meditation. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret plots of the wicked, from the rebellion of the workers of iniquity, who sharpen their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows. Bitter words that they may shoot in secret at the blameless, suddenly they shoot at him and do not fear. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. They talk of laying snares secretly. They say, who will see them? Verse 6, they devise iniquities. We have perfected the shrewd scheme. Both the inward thought and the heart of men are deep. Well, friends, the United States of America is more and more moving toward being a totalitarian state that despises the word of God. Prophet Isaiah indeed warns us about that in his book, chapter 30, verses 12 to 17. You can learn more and read more about our world news analysis on our site, biblenewsprophecy.net. BibleNewsProphecy.net. My name is Alexander Sashavelich. Until the next time, goodbye, friends.